feet and covered up 18 inches of dirt, mound it over whatever so you can remember where to find it, and then you can bury it and take it wherever. If you want to bury it and keep it there permanently, it's going to act like a diaper in a plastic bag. So you're going to want to poke holes in it and stuff so that it can eventually kind of degrade and all that. So. Okay, if if it's a long term situation, we won't probably be using these. We're going to be digging in the outhouse. We're going to be digging a hole. If we do that, it's got to be probably four to six feet deep at least, about one foot wide. And then you're going to fill it up until it's about 18 inches, and then you're going to dig another hole. Okay, another option. Other than doing that, which is actually in my mind better, is to compost it. Okay? I spent some time reading <laughs> in the last week or two. This is a fabulous book. Um, it's called The Humanure Handbook, and it talks about not only composting human waste, but it also talks about composting in general. It talks about what to do with wastewater. It talks about a lot of things. It's very it's environmentally friendly book, but I love what it had to say in here. Now, a lot of people are really concerned about, well, I don't want to compost human waste. It's dangerous. Um, if, as long as you're composting correctly, and as long as you let it sit long enough, you're not going to have any problem at all, because the whole process of composting breaks all that stuff down before it's not too dangerous. You would want to compost for two to three years before you used it, but it, but it can be done. The thing that's nice about it is everybody's been camping and they've gone to an outhouse. Do you love the smell? The fun? No. When you're doing it this way, you're not going to have that issue. And you're returning it all to the soil and for good purposes. So, one way to get rid of the smell temporarily is lemon mash. Lemon mash. Because all you smell is the burn. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions on the toilet issue before we move on? Alrighty, let's talk about garbage. Okay. We, we, <laughs> so much that every week we have these great big huge garbage cans and we have to wheel them out to the street and they come and they take it away from us. We don't ever talk really think about it anymore. We are so blessed that way. Some people even have two garbage cans that they fill every week. We've seen that. Um, well, what would you do? If nobody came and brought your garbage anymore, what would you do? how would you handle that? Did anybody see um, yeah. Contagion? Contagion. Did you see, anybody see that movie, Contagion? Okay, there's a movie that was recently put out. I think it's in the dollar theater right now, and it's about a pandemic. But one of the things that they show is how the services all stopped, and everybody had just thrown their gar their garbage out on the curb. And it was just piled and piled up all over the streets. There was garbage everywhere. And that's probably what we're looking at, that kind of a situation, unless you know what to do with it and how to handle it. So let's talk about it. Okay, if we, if we want to condense our garbage down as much as possible. So the ways that we are going to do that is, first off, we're just going to be smart about what we put in the garbage. If it can be reused or recycled, then we will. Um, cottage cheese containers, yogurt containers, Maybe some cans. There's some different things. Plastic bags. Wash them out and reuse them. Don't throw them away. Composting. That's going to be really important because there's so much stuff that we throw away or put down our garbage disposals, which we wouldn't have, that can be composted. <coughs> Pretty much anything that was once living can be composted. Um, fatty foods, dairy, dairy products, and stuff like that. I meat. I meat. Okay, I was told not to compost that, but then when I was reading in this book, okay, now you got to think that this guy, he's doing human waste as well, and so he's composting for two to three years before it's used, he uses it. Those things can be composted, they just take a really long time. And so, pests is what you're saying. Yeah, well, but if you're composting, then you don't have that smell and stuff, and, and if you're doing it right, then so it shouldn't be a problem. Out there. It could possibly, yeah. So it's not recommended necessarily that you do that, but it could, those things could possibly be. Yeah, there would be not. But also 
you think about it, if there is leftovers like that, it could be fed to an animal. Still wouldn't necessarily be fed to an And that is one of, one of the other options that we have is to feed the stuff to animals that we can. So composting, feeding to animals. Um, if we're in that kind of a situation, we'll probably be given permission to burn. So you can burn, hopefully be able to burn stuff that's burnable. Other than that, you're going to crush things down as small as possible. And you're going to put it in a tight container that is not going to be able to be gotten into by animals or rodents or anything like that that insects and flies can get to. If you need, if you fill up all your containers and you still have more garbage and you don't know what to don't know what to do with it, again, you can bury this as well. Same rules apply: 100 feet away from any water source and 18 inches deep, because animals can and, and will dig it up. Also, if you can separate any dry garbage from the wet garbage, your dry garbage is going to stay without smelling bad longer than if you combine it all. And burning really can take up almost all of it. I grew up in a place where they let us burn alpinistic, so there's not much left in the garbage. So if we're smart about it, we're going to have really very little garbage. Right? Okay. All right, so let's, let's talk a little bit about gray water. Okay. Gray water is our wastewater that we use for washing our hands, washing dishes, bathing, all those kinds of things. Alrighty. Gray water can possibly be contaminated with bacteria, especially bathing and, and chemicals. So we want to be careful about throwing these things out. It would be very wise for us to make sure that we're using biodegradable soaps and cleansers. Um, Again, same thing applies. We want to pour it out at least 100 feet away from any water source. And you obviously don't want to drink any gray water. You wouldn't want to come into physical contact with gray water because of the possible bacterial contamination. So if you are dealing with gray water, you want to wash your hands after that. Um, it can be poured out and used. You can use it to water plants. You can use it to water things. Even food plants, as long as it doesn't touch the fruit or whatever it is that you're going to be eating, okay? So like a tomato plant, you can water. I don't know that I would water potatoes, that makes sense. Okay. Um, you do not want it to pool on the surface of the ground. Uh, you don't want it to run off your property. And before you pour it out, you, if you've got lots of big pieces of food in it, like the washing dishes or something, you want to try and strain that out before, because that will also breed bacteria. And if you have... Um, a lot of grease in the water, it might be wise to make a grease trap. And I've got instructions in your handout, I'm not going to go over that. But you can strain that grease out. All right. This book also has some great ideas as far as making gray water um, drainage systems that make it so it would be really easy for you to pour your gray water out without causing any problems. Okay. The next thing that is a concern is rodents and insects and flies because they carry diseases and can help cause sickness as well. So you want to make sure you have plenty of fly squatters or whatever it is that you're going to use to kill flies. You don't want any have any standing water any place around you that's going to breed mosquitoes if you can do it. You want to make sure you have mouse traps or whatever it is to catch rodents. But most importantly, you want to keep a clean environment. Are you inviting them, or especially rodents, or, or are you keeping your place clean? You don't have garbage all over the place and you're not providing a place where they're going to go elsewhere if there's nothing there for them. So, all righty. Um, let's talk about a short-term short -term situation. Let's say we had an earthquake in your home, okay? First thing, first things you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn the water off to your home because you don't know if the water lines have been broken down one. So you want to turn your water off so that your water lines don't get possibly contaminated with bad water. Okay. Um, now here's the concern. What if the sewer lines break? Okay. All your sewer lines, some homes have a back, a backflow valve, some homes don't. Do you know whether yours does or not? All right, so I'm going to tell you what to do with or without. If you know for sure that you have a black back 